Hello, my name is Donna Bellamy and I'm the author of Raising Happy Hearts and Little Eyes That See the Glory, which is coming soon. And I am the wife of almost 18 years to my husband, Will, and we have six children together, ranging from almost 17 all the way to four and a half. And so today I just wanted to share something that just happened recently and, you know, something that is, you know, prevalent in the world is, and let me just give you the scripture, that the enemy prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour and the sad thing is it's not just adults that he seeks to devour but it starts as children that he tries to devour children before they're even born and he tries to you know bring bring um, different agendas in that don't allow for procreation or they he gives um, you know women this idea that you know being mothers is somehow not something to aspire to and so they don't even want to have a family and have children or you know to abortion to you know all up to from when they're born all the way as they grow you know the enemy is trying to attack them in every stage you know to stop them from fulfilling their destiny and to be the person that God destined them to be and so I just wanted to encourage you that we as mothers or fathers if you're if you're listening that it's our role to protect our children as they grow kind of like if you are trying to grow a a tree okay it doesn't become a tree overnight you know you start you plant the seed you've got to give the seed the proper environment to be able to sprout and sorry if you hear a little squeak in the background i don't know one of my cats is like stretching and squeaking anyway so the the seed sprouts and it becomes this little seedling and it's super fragile and a lot of the time they're grown in a greenhouse to protect it until the time that it can go outside and then it can get you know some of the certain elements you know it can withstand the wind it can withstand the rain and you know to up to a certain point you know but it can't withstand any any large storms at this point you know if a large storm were to come or a hailstorm you know it would just get it would just get ruined right whereas a big tree you know we have this big oak tree out in our backyard and it is just like it withstands floods it withstands hail you know probably you would even withstand a, a tornado at this point but the children they don't have a big perspective on life yet they don't understand you know are certain things about the world and so we as parents we're meant to be like the greenhouse that covers them and so here's another lie that the enemy tells parents is that you're being too controlling you're being too controlling just let the kids just do what they want to do and it's not about being controlling it's like the enemy he wants the opportunity to attack the children so he's going to tell you just back away back away you know let them go on and you know have this experience and have that experience go you know let them go on this sleepover you know that's what all kids do no don't let them go on sleepovers that's where most of most of the children are either molested or introduced to pornography for the first time is at sleepovers and also you know um, most of the time when children are molested it's through a family member that's another thing to be aware of so there's certain things that you know you can't be too careful so my husband and I you know we're super especially my husband even more so than me very thoughtful about what we allow the children to watch what we allow them to do you know who we allow them to be friends with and so up until you know my oldest two are teenagers and and they're only just starting to realize certain things that they've been sheltered from their whole lives and they're really thankful that they were sheltered their whole lives like even my my son he said he didn't even know what a cuss word was or a swear word was until you know he was 12 you know and that's that's a good thing you know and so my children were raised in a holy atmosphere in a really wholesome you know place and so when the enemy tries to rear his ugly head and attack them, um, they have a strength inside them and a foundation inside them where they're able to withstand the attacks of the enemy and to be able to even come to us about it and to share, share with us about things and so we're able to help them. So like one of my children, one of our children were dealing with something recently as, and as a matter of fact, um, going back a little further, when my husband and I were still in Bible college, we had a professor, he spoke a word over us and he said that 
you know, you and your husband will spring every trap of the enemy with regards to your children. So if you can imagine that there's bear traps that the enemy has set for even your children, of course, then my husband and I and you guys will be able to see that those traps are set and get a stick and spring it. So you, you know, push the, the bait down with a stick and so it, it clamps but it misses your children. So I was talking to even one of my children today that you know that the, the enemy had that bear trap for them. He had the bait on there. And you know when you're trying to catch a animal, you need to put something on the trap that they are going to be attracted to, something that they want. And so they have the bear trap, you know, or whatever trap for whatever animal you have the bait that they want so that they will go after the bait right so the enemy baited you know one of my children and to their credit they realized that it was a trap because of their relationship with the lord and instead of going and taking that bait they actually started talking to the lord about it and the lord gave them a scripture and the lord was able to stop them from you know moving forward in that direction and then my husband actually had woke up in the middle of the night and he was thinking about this particular child and didn't know why. So the next day I was able to talk to that child and stuff, you know, was able to, uh, we were able to talk about things and I was able to realize that the trap that the enemy had set for them and then my husband and I were able to nip it in the bud, you know, you know, I was able to share truth with, with them and then my husband was able to share truth with them and we were able to just thwart another plan of the enemy that the enemy had for one of our children. And all glory to God for this, all glory to God. And then, so last night, my husband actually had a dream where he was visited by by that, that spirit, that demon that was attacking one of our children. And it was like that demon was now exposed that the plans that he had can no longer take place because we've sprung another trap. And so, that led me to you know want to share with you that the enemy is ruthless that he's going to lie to you to help you to um to stop being that watchman that that shepherd over your children he's going to try different ways to to get an inroad he is a prowling lion um so he's looking for every opportunity and he doesn't play fair and he's super ruthless and so we need to be super ruthless when it comes to him. We need to make sure that if our children get invited to somewhere, especially as they become teenagers or even when they're little, if they get invited somewhere, just stop and just ask the Holy Spirit, yes or no, and see what you have peace about. And it's better to err on the side of caution. And then I tell my children, like, if I have to tell them no, I don't just be the no person. You know, I'm just, I tell them why I'm saying no. And then, but the thing is with, with me, I always try to give my children lots of opportunities to do things and, you know, I, I bless them at every opportunity that I can and so that they're not missing out. They're just missing out on falling into the trap of the enemy. And, and so instead of it being, you know, me against them, we actually, because I share with them my heart and why I'm saying no, you know, we, we are able to, to stand, you know, together with a common goal that this is the goal that we have and we're protecting you against the enemy and you know we want you to to grow up whole and to know who you are in Christ and to know the word of God and to fulfill your destiny and I constantly speak destiny into them you know I'm like this is what the Lord has spoken over you since you were a child these are the words that are spoken over you you have a high calling you have a destiny God has something amazing for you to fulfill and so you need to stand against those plans of the enemy you need to focus on the Word of God you know and I'm speaking that over them and so they see the bigger picture of everything and it's just to God's glory it's just like um, it's just every time you know a situation tries to rear its ugly head like the Holy Spirit just quenches it, like just quenches it. Like he always has the answer. And it's just like, you know, and now we have like two teenagers. And so there's, you know, things that are coming up now that have never come up in the past. And God is still so faithful that everything that comes up, he has the answer for it. So I just wanted to encourage you that God has the answer for you. You don't have to stress about it. You don't have to worry about it. You can just be like, God, uh, this is this is going on. 
What is your answer for it? And God will give you the right words to say. He'll give you the right prayers to pray. He'll give you, he'll give you um, insight, just like he did with my husband. Like he woke my husband up at night and started speaking to him about things. So and I, um, so my husband, because he is the spiritual head of the home, a lot of the time the Lord will speak to him first about the condition of the of the house and the condition of our hearts. Because, you know, if there's something going on, you know, God sees everything. He brings it to our attention because we are like the shepherds of the flock. And what the enemy tries to do is he tries to take one of the children and take them by themselves and lie to them and say, no one will understand. You know, your parents won't understand. Like no one else is going through this. You know, you're just, it's just you and you're strange or whatever the lies are. But the, the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you and your husband so that you can pull them back into the flock and clean them up and speak truth and destiny into them and you know bring everybody back into back into the flock back into safety and that's what we need to do as parents is to do that where we watch over them and it's super important job and it's not a light thing it's not an easy thing but we can rest and know that God he's he's walking there with us like I would have just bombed completely as a wife and a mother if it wasn't for the Lord but thank God I have him and he helps me in my weaknesses and he's with me all the time and he speaks to me and he makes sure I understand things and he helps me like if, if one of my children is struggling with something um, he'll help me to notice it and he'll give me the answer and he'll help me to bring that child out of that situation and so it's constant adjustments constant adjustments you know from the outside you know people may think oh you know you're just the perfect family and everybody has issues everybody's got issues but the good thing is is that you just can as they arise you can nip them in the bud they don't have to blow into these major things you know you see okay my child my child is believing a lie or my child has a heart wound i need to deal with that like my daughter i think i shared with this already but i, I definitely put in my book that she had a heart wound from when her dad had to get deployed to haiti when he was in the army and so uh, so it was crazy the enemy actually lied to her and she believed that he had died and then when he actually came back he was my husband had lost a bunch of weight he was super skinny he didn't look like the dad that had left but she believed that it was her dad because I told her this is your dad and she's like, okay so that's my dad but then she carried that that she had this wound that you know daddy's gone and what made it worse was I gave birth to I don't want to make this super long but I gave birth, she was five and Jerome was four and I gave, I was giving birth to my third born so I left to go to the hospital and didn't wake them up because my sister was there in the house. Uh, I left them with my sister and her husband and she just had had a baby like 10 days before that, her first born. So I went to the hospital, my sister was going to take care of Kira and Jerome. But what happened was Kira and Jerome got up and they didn't see me, they didn't find me, they didn't know where I was and they had such fear like they had a spirit of fear on them like it lasted for about a year they were afraid to be left alone i couldn't even after that i couldn't put them in the back of the car and close the door and get in the front without them screaming like someone was like slicing them in half it was it was bad and then my mom helped me realize that first of all their dad had left and and i didn't realize but kira thought that he had died and all of a sudden mum was gone like and it just rocked their world and so now Kira is like, she's almost 17 and she, I don't know, she, she can see in the spirit. So she would always battle with things at night and see things at night and always be dealing with stuff. And it was always a battle for her. And then the Lord kind of started talking to her and she was remembering that there was something that she had lost in the past and she was trying to think of what it was. And then the Lord brought to her remembrance that what she had lost was her dad or so she thought. And so she started, you know, bursting out crying and she came and spoke to me about it. And I was able to, you know, walk her through a healing prayer and to be able to, you know, get that healing and that closure. And since she did that, all of the, like, well, most of those manifestations that she was able to, that she was seeing every night stopped. So there was an open door for the enemy the whole time and we didn't have any idea. But God is faithful, you know, he, he exposed it and we were able to deal with it and, bring that resolution and I talk more about it in in my book that is that's coming out so I just wanted to encourage you that God is for you the enemy is against you but God is so much greater 
and he who is in you is so much greater than he that's in the world that God is able to help you to shepherd your children even in this world this crazy world that we're in these days and and like the access to the to just you know the stuff on the TV and the stuff on the internet and the stuff on the phones and just the to, you know he's going to help you to just navigate that minefield for your children to help them to be able to grow up holy and whole even in these times that we're living in right now he's able so i just want to encourage you with that and i'm just going to end with a prayer so for all the parents that are that are listening and even if the children are listening right now all the children i just take power and authority over all the power of the enemy and i cancel all the enemy's assignments against their children right now in jesus name and i command the host of heaven to war on their behalf and to tear down any and all strongholds plots and plans of the enemy and expose the enemy right now in jesus mighty name you go and Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that you're turning things around, Lord, that you're exposing the enemy right now, that every plan that he has set in the darkness, Lord, that you will just expose it in the light, that you would give, Lord, every parent the wisdom to be able to spring every trap of the enemy as, as they get laid and to be able to, Lord, give their children wisdom and instruction and to help them to navigate their childhood and into adulthood and to be those strong oak trees, Lord, that you destined them to be, Lord, that they will bear fruit in due season and be a place that 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 animals and birds can can gather their fruit and to rest under their under their branches. And Lord, I just thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. I'm sorry that this is a bit long, but hopefully it was helpful. And, you know, if you have any comments, any, any questions of me, you know, please just leave it in, in the comments down below and I will be certain to answer them. All right. Love you guys. Bye.